Hi students, we're back with question number six. Okay, it says solve algebraically for the first three positive times of graphs y equals one and y equals two plus three cosine two pi over 13 times x minus five intersect. So we're gonna set them equal to each other. One equals two plus three cosine two pi over 13 x minus five. Okay, so we wanna get x alone. So first thing we're gonna do is subtract two. So negative one equals three cosine two pi over 13 x minus five. Okay, divide by three. Now basically the x is inside the parentheses. So we're trying to get inside. In order to get inside, we gotta peel back the layers. So the first thing is we gotta get rid of the cosine. So we're gonna go cosine inverse both sides. So cosine inverse is going to undo cosine, okay? So now we have cosine inverse of negative one-third equals 2 pi over 13 times x minus 5. Again, we want to get rid of the number on the outside, so we're going to reciprocal it, multiply by the reciprocal. So these cancel, and then we got to put a plus and minus in front. So we're doing cosine, and cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3, so it gives us both rotations. Last step, we're going to add the 5. So we have plus and minus 13 over 2 pi, cosine inverse of negative 1 third, and then we're adding the 5. All right, so make sure you are in radian mode first. 13 over 2 pi. I'm going to do the positive first, and then we'll go back and we'll do the negative. Cosine inverse, negative one-third. Okay, look what just happened. I forgot to press over. There we go. So cosine inverse, negative one-third, and then plus five. Okay, so we remember we want both answers, and we're going to the nearest three decimal places. So x equals eight. 0.953. Now I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to copy paste it, but I'm going to go in front and I'm going to put a negative. Okay, and I get x equals one point, whoops. I go 1.047. Now those are both positive, but I need three values. So we need to find the period. So I am going to do 2 pi divided by 2 pi over 13, which is B. So the period is 13. And then we got to add the period to this one because that's the first one there. So we're going to get 14.047. So that is my third value. So there's my three values. On to number seven. Squares are cut out of a rectangular piece of cardboard. So I'm basically going to be doing volume. So these would be where my folds are. X is going to be my height because I'm not sure what that is. This whole side is 16. This whole side is 12. That means the side and the bottom of the box is 16 minus 2X because I have two little X pieces. And then this side here is going to be 12 minus 2x. Because again, I have these two little pieces here that I'm subtracting out. Okay? So, volume, length times width times height. x is my height, 16 minus 2x, and 12 minus 2x, those are my length and my width. All right, so we, we are going to do a graph. It's going to look like this. One of my roots is 0. If I set the other two equal to zero, I'm going to get a six and an eight. We want to go with the first number, the closest one to zero. So I need to graph this. We're going to type the equation in. Make sure when you do x, you do, whoops, x times, and then your parentheses. So 16 minus 2x in parentheses, and then 12 minus 2x. And then I'm going to do menu, window, window settings. I want to go 0 to 6. 
and then I got to go menu, window, zoom fit, perfect. Menu, analyze graph, maximum, from there to there. Now, if I can't see it, I'm going to grab it and move it, and then we got to label it on our graph. So there's my dot. I get 2.262, 297, comma, so that's my x value, 194.067. That is my volume. So the y value is my volume. It says to find the dimensions of the box. So dimensions are length, width, and height. So obviously my first one is 2.263 by, now I got to take my X number and plug it in to each of those. So when you plug it in, you should get 7.474, and then my other side should be 11.474. So those are my dimensions. Let's read the question, find the dimensions of the box. And the maximum volume, volume is my Y value, so 194.067. And that's my final answer. All right, number eight, partial fractions. We need to factor the bottom first, minus eight plus two. Okay, that looks good. Oh, no, not minus eight. Hello, how about minus four? How about minus 4 minus 2? Let's try that again. Okay, minus 4 minus 2. There we go. Okay, so my equation is going to be A over X minus 4 plus B over X minus 2 equals 10X minus 7 over X minus 4, X minus 2. Now, just like you guys did last year, we need to get rid of the denominator. So we're going to multiply everything by the common denominator. So I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 4 and x minus 2. Whoops. Minus 4, minus 2. x minus 4, x minus 2. Okay. So here the x minus 4 cancels. I have a times x minus 2. Here the x minus 2 cancels. I have plus b times x minus 4. The whole thing cancels, and I have 10x minus 7. Okay, so in order to get rid of a, I need to make x equal to 2. That will get rid of the a. So I'm plugging 2 in for all my x's. So I'm going to get b times 2 minus 4 equals 10 times 2 minus 7. So I have negative 2b. Over here, 20 minus 7, 13, divide by negative 2. So B is negative 13 over 2. All right, that's fine. All right, now to get A, I have to make X equal 4. So if I plug 4 in, I'm going to get A times 4 minus 2 equals, the B is going to cancel, 10 times 4 minus 7. So 2A equals 40 minus 7 is um, 33 divided by 2. So I have 33 over 2. Okay, so that's great. Of course, I'm running out of room. Now I have to write my equation. So going back to the beginning, whoops. Going back to the top. There we go. Um, my A value was 30, 33 over 2. Here, I'm going to erase my volume so I have a little bit more room up here. So instead of A, I'm going to write 33 over 2, and the denominator is X minus 4. So I'm just going to leave that like that. My B value is negative, so I'm going to write minus 13 over 2, and then X minus 2. So that's basically saying that was the original problem. All right, let's take a look at number 9, write in standard form or vertex form. All right, let's take a look. I know this is an ellipse because I have an x squared plus a y squared. We're going to put our x's together first, then our y's, and then we got to move our number to the other side, so negative 110. Okay, I'm going to erase this stuff so it's out of my way. All right, so now I'm going to GCF out of 5. I have x squared minus 8x, base. I'm going to take out 
a 2y squared minus 10y space equals negative 110 space space. All right, so divide by 2 and square it. I get 4 squared, which is 16. But what am I adding to the other side? 16 times 5. So 16 times 5, 80. All right, over here, divide by 2 and square it. I should get 25. 25 times 2 is 50. Okay. So now we're going to keep the 5. X minus 4 squared plus 2. Y minus 5 squared equals, looks like 40. No. Nope. I mean 10. Okay, we're going to divide everything by 10. You guys probably think I'm crazy. Let's try 20. <laughs> there we go. All right, 20, 20, 20. So when I divide, I'm going to get x minus 4 squared over 4 plus, whoops, and I forgot my squared over there, y minus 5 squared over 10 equals 1. So this should be the correct answer. Okay, looking at number 10, I think we have time to do this. We're going to factor the top and factor the bottom, minus 6 plus 1, bottom x times x minus 6. Whole, we're going to cancel. That gives me my x number, so my x number is 6. What's left? x plus 1 over x. So if I plug 6 into whatever's left, I'm going to get 7 over 6. Vertical asymptote, what will make the denominator equal to 0? 0. Horizontal asymptote, um, if I divide the coefficients, I get 1, slant, none. Slant asymptote only happens if the highest power is on the top. Okay? Oops. Let's move it down. X-intercept is when Y is 0. Y-intercept is when X is 0. So the Y value is 0 when the top is 0. So that will be negative 1. And if I plug in 0 for all my Xs, that can't happen. So that's a none. All right, so we're going to draw a sketch. So first thing, let's look at the asymptotes. I have 0 x equals 0 is actually the y-axis. This is y equals 1. Erase that. Okay. And then I want to do, let's see, the whole is at the over 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to be above that. And then the only other thing I have is my x-intercept right there. So this is going to look like that. And that's going to look like that. Okay, we're going to pause here, and then we have one more video to go.